All that. All right. Um, so welcome back, everybody. Shout out all the people at home. Hope you guys are all staying well. Um, I had a question to. Oops, I need to get the calculus notes up. Section three six derivatives of logarithms. Um, I had a question to go over some problems. So let's start there. What page was this on? 204? 215, sorry. Uh, what question did you want, Kaz? Let me screen capture that. All right. So um, for this one, um, I want to find f prime of one, right? F prime of one. All right. Um, of course, we're just about to write. We're just about to write. Mr. Pilato. Living in this. <laughs> um, he's in his room. Yeah, no problem. All right, and we're back. Okay, so we say if f of x is equal to x squared, or sorry, f of x plus x squared times f of x to the third is equal to 10, find f of 1, or sorry, find, uh, and given that f of 1 is 2, find f prime of 1. All right. Um, so I could really write this as like y, oh, thank you, y plus x squared y to the third is equal to 10, right? Because f of x is y. Because that might help you in terms of the notation. Because when I go to differentiate this, this is y prime plus, now this is quotient, or sorry, this is product rule, right? The product rule here. So um, derivative of the first times the original of the second plus derivative of the second. Now let's go original first times the derivative of the second, 3y squared y prime. Whenever we differentiate y, we put a y prime attached to it, is equal to 10. But whenever I differentiate 10, it turns into 0. You follow me there? All right. So I'm going to get this term over to the other side. So this is y prime uh, plus x squared. Well, let's say 3x squared y squared y prime uh, is equal to negative 2x y to the third. I technically don't need to do this simplification, but it's a good, it's a good process. Y prime factored out is one plus three x squared. Uh, yeah, three x squared y squared. And then I divide it over. Y prime is equal to negative two x y to the third, all over one plus three x squared y squared. Now, so that's really like f prime of x, right? I could change back the notation to say that this is this is really like saying f prime of x. All right, now if I want to find f prime of 1, that means 1 goes in for x. So that means negative 2 times um, 1 times f of 1 to the third, that's a 3, uh, all divided by 1 plus 3 times 1 squared times f of 1 squared. I just put f back in instead of y. All right, then now we evaluate. I know that f of 1 is 2. So this is uh, negative 2 times 8 all over 1 plus uh, 3 times Two? Nope, four. Sorry, four, four, four. And let's see what that turns out to be. Negative 16 over 13, I think. 
that seems like a really weird number. I'm going to check that key. Twenty was it twenty one? Yep. Negative sixteen thirteen. Fifteen? Sure. Yep, 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 yep. This one, right? Yeah. All right. Okay. So, um, first thing that I want to do is, well, this is nothing to simplify. Let's differentiate both sides. Um, this is a chain rule with a quotient rule inside it, right? The left side, even though it looks really simple, it's a chain rule with a quotient rule inside of it. Because when I go to differentiate e to the x over y, I'm going to get e to the x over y. That's the derivative of the outer layer times the derivative of the inner layer. Well, the derivative of xy, x over y, is going to be so like this is what I'm going to do here d over dx of x divided by y is going to be okay so we have the derivative of the first so 1 times y minus x times y prime over y squared everybody follow me there that's just the quotient rule x minus xy sorry y minus xy prime over y squared, okay? So we've got y minus xy prime over y squared is equivalent to, and now this is just a subtraction, so there's no funky rules to do here, one minus y prime. Um, I am going to multiply the y squared over to the other side. Okay. So I'm going to get e to the x over y times y minus xy prime is equal to y squared minus y squared y prime. And then I will distribute in the e to the x over y. So e to the e to the x over y, y minus e to the x over y, x, y prime is equal to y squared minus y squared y prime. Now we move all of our y primes to the left side, all of the others to the right side. So we are left with, um, let's add this y squared y prime. You got to watch out. Sometimes like when I am doing this, my y primes start to look like y to the first, right? And which is not very good. That can throw us off. You know, this is like y prime, right? And so now I'm going to add over. I get y squared y prime minus e to the x over y, x y prime is equal to, and then I subtract over. I've got y squared minus e to the x over y, y. That piece right there. Back down to y prime. Y prime, we've got y squared minus e to the x over y times x. Y squared minus e to the x over y, y. I'm going to go divide that over. Y prime is equal to uh, y squared minus e to the x over y, y over y squared minus e to the x over y x. Which it turns out, I mean, like that looks really similar. Like that's really surprising that it ended up like that. And it looks so similar. 
Then tell us. Just the weather. It's raining. I got home from school and I like just there were so many leaves in my yard. I I just started and we had Sadie's conference last night too. So like at four o'clock I had to stop and do con and like go to the conference and then come back. I did leave nonstop until like all the point where I was home. And then when I got back home until it was like nighttime. Oh my back hurts, my arms hurt. I'm any questions on that, on anything else on the homework before we get into, what's that? 19. 19. 19. 19. Ooh, some trig. Um, Mr. Uh, speaking of trig, Mr. Westfall gave me a fun little quiz that he gives his, to, to his AP students. Um, it's a, let me show you. It is a quiz. Where would it be? I think I put it in modules here. With, I, I don't know if I'm going to give it to you guys, or if I do, I'm, I, maybe I'm up, well, maybe for points or something. Um, but it's a derivative rules. Don't ignore the after section 3A because that's not for us. Um, that's for them. But it's a just a quiz that's just like, okay, what's like what's the derivative of sine x? What's the derivative of cosine x? What's the derivative of tangent x? What's the derivative of secant x? What's the derivative of cosecant? What's the derivative of cotangent? What's the derivative of inverse sine? What's the derivative of inverse cosine? What's the derivative of inverse tangent? What's the derivative of, and so on, right? And it's just like just the 12, six regular, six inverse, you know, just kind of just a, like try to get them in our brains a little bit, yeah. Um, because again, I can't give you a formula sheet on your test. Okay, so you'll be expected to know those for the test, not for any quiz that we would have, but for the test, the chapter two test, you'd be expected to know those. All right, sorry, let's get back to that. Um, it's almost like a quiz list for you guys, you know, like this, which is cute. Yeah. Eric Harmon knows from the No, I didn't say them. Sorry. Yeah, if you look back on section three four, for some reason that, that day I just closed out of it. I forgot to say it. So. Sorry about that. There's the video. So. All right. Uh, so let's find sine x y is equal to cosine x plus y. All right. So when I go to differentiate this, this is a chain rule with a product rule inside of it. Right. So I've got in the derivative of co, uh, sine is cosine. And then I have to multiply that, peel away the sign, and I'm left with x, y. So I've got to do product rule here. Okay, product rule means that I've got to take uh, derivative of x, which is just 1 times y, plus the derivative of sorry, x times the derivative of y, which is y prime, is equal to, and then this is a another chain rule with a cosine, but it's just a, a sum inside, so I don't have to do anything funky on the, on the chain. So uh, inverse... I'm sorry, the, uh, the, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. I don't know why I put up a parenthesis here. I did that. Um, and then times the derivative of x plus y. Well, derivative of x is just 1. The derivative of y is y prime. So 1 plus y prime. Everybody follow me so far? Check that. Cosine x, y, y, x, y prime. Negative sine x plus y, 1 plus y prime. Yep, we're good so far. And now I'm going to distribute it. Okay, so we've got y cosine x, y plus x, y prime cosine x, y is equal to negative sine x plus y and then uh, negative y prime sine x plus y. Everybody follow me there? It's distributed. Okay, let's get all our y primes to one side, cosines to the other. Well, not cosines, the regulars to the other. So I've got uh, x, y prime, cosine x plus y, plus y prime sine x plus y is equal to 
negative sine x plus y minus y cosine x plus y. Oh, cosine x, y, not x plus y. Sorry, the plus has gotten away. Sorry. And now we factor out the y prime. X cosine xy plus sine x plus y is equal to negative sine x plus y minus y cosine xy. And now we divide it over. So y prime is equal to negative sine x plus y minus y cosine xy all divided by x cosine xy plus sine I could reorder this to say, um, like the book gives this answer, pull the negative out of the top, make it all in front, and then put the y cosine xy in front, y cosine xy plus sine x plus y all over uh, x cosine xy plus sine x plus y. I, it just looks a little bit more interesting there. Yep. <laughs> Hold on, let me let me just double check that answer before I. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, what's that? Three six derivatives of logarithms. So again, continuing it this on this pattern of finding all sorts of derivatives, anything that we could possibly get thrown at us, we're going to find the derivatives of those things. Okay, doesn't matter if it's trig, if it's inverse trig, exponential, logarithmic, whatever. We can find the derivative of anything that we wanted to once we get done with chapter three. So this, so this one's derivatives of logarithmic functions. Now, um, in this section, we use implicit differentiation to find the derivatives of logarithmic functions. Um, like, for example, y is equal to log base b of x, and in particular, the natural logarithmic function. We're going to find that um, it's really interesting, the, the derivative of ln of x. Yeah, that one's kind of a, a pretty cool one. Um, it can be proved that logarithmic functions are differentiable. This is certainly plausible from, from section 1512. All right, so this is the rule for um, use it for differentiating log base b of x. Okay. The derivative of log base b of x is 1 divided by x ln of b. x divided by 1 over x ln of b. 1 over x ln of b. Okay? 1 over x ln of b. And again, the proof for that is in the book. If you'd like to see it, you can, you can go and do that. But the, uh, to differentiate log base b of x, it's 1 divided by x ln of b. Okay. So, what would happen if I made my base e? 
the natural logarithm, right? What would happen if I made that base, if I wanted to find d over dx of log base e of x? We know we could rewrite log base e of x as ln of x, but it'll help us here with writing it as log base e of x. Well, then that would turn into 1 over x times uh, ln of our base e. What is ln of e? It's 1. Because I would be saying log base e of e. Right? So if I was wondering what that would be, log base e of e, we would say e to the what power is e? e to the first is e, right? So this turns out to be 1. So 1 over x. Ooh. Interesting. d over dx of ln of x is just 1 over x. So it's really Natural logs show up a lot in calculus because differentiated is quite easy. Again, if we put b uh, is equal to e in the first formula, then factor b, ln of b on the right side becomes, then the factor ln b becomes 1 when we get the formula below. By comparing formulas 1 and 2, we see that one of the main reasons that natural logarithms are using calculus is that uh, the differentiation formula is quite simple when b is e. And it happens a lot, right? When things naturally decay or when things naturally grow, we use e. <laughs> The natural constant, 2.71828, so on. Okay. All right. Let's do some examples. Differentiate y is equal to ln of x to the third plus 1. Okay. Well, um, to differentiate ln of x, it was 1 over x, right? So if it's ln of x to the third plus 1, then to differentiate that, it would be 1 over x to the third plus 1, right? But there was something inside of ln, right? So this is actually a chain rule, right? Because this piece was inside. So I have to multiply by the derivative of x to the third plus 1 or 3x squared. We put it on the top. 3x squared over x to the third plus 1. Okay. So we can see where we're headed with this. Okay. If you got something inside of ln, natural log, it ends up, the derivative just ends up going on the top. The derivative of that thing just ends up going on the top. So, like, the derivative of x to the third plus 1, 3x squared, ends up just going into the numerator. What goes into the denominator? Well, just that function, non-derivative of that function. So we can generalize that to say this. I, I like this one better. If you've got a function inside ln and you differentiate it, so it's like ln of g of x. Last step, last probably was ln of x to the third plus 1. So in that case, g of x is x to the third plus 1. If you have a function inside ln, you basically just put the derivative of the inner function divided by the function itself. There's no natural log. It goes away. Because the derivative of natural log is 1 over x. Okay? Sorry, did I move too quick on that one? Yeah. All right, so let's find d, of, d over dx of ln sine x. Okay. So using this rule, you know, uh, by all means, we could just apply the chain rule if we wanted to. This is just kind of like a shortcut, right? The derivative of the inner is cosine x divided by the regular outer, or the, the regular inner, sine x. That's, if I called this y, we'd say y prime. What is that? Cotangent. Okay. 
Now, again, that was just using that rule. What if we didn't want to use that rule? What if we wanted to say, okay, I just want to apply the chain rule. I don't want to remember that thing. It's just one more formula that I need to remember. Just apply the chain rule then. Because you would write um, d over dx of ln sine x would just really be, well, okay, I've got to do, I've got to differentiate ln of x, which is ln of, or sorry, 1 over the original. Then I have, since there was a function inside ln, I have to apply the chain rule, multiply by the derivative of sine, which is cosine x, which ends up getting back to cosine x over sine x, which gets, gets us back to cosine. Okay. So let's keep, let's keep going. So we saw a chain rule where there was something inside of the natural log. Now, what is something happening to the natural log? Like, for example, this um, ln, of, ln of x, which is inside the square root. Um, I like to write the inside of the square root or the square root as a power. So we'll just rewrite this as f of x is equal to ln of x uh, to the one half power. Right? Okay, so uh, f prime is going to be. Okay, I differentiate the thing being raised to the one half power, which is one half ln of x to the negative one half, right? I just differentiated it being raised to the first one half power. Now, chain rule says I multiply by the derivative of the inner, one over x. Now, I, let's, let's kind of evaluate the negative one half, okay? Let's evaluate the negative one half. Because I've got something, you know, I'm multiplying by a fraction over here. I can create a fraction over here if I wanted to. One over, you know, the one half makes a two in the denominator. This um, ln of x to the one half brings it down into the denominator. Right? And then let's just make that a square root. And then we can finish it off just by multiplying the x in. Don't bring it inside the, the radical. Just make it 2x square root of ln of x. Okay. Again, the fact that there's an ln in there actually makes ln a little easier. It's kind of like... You know, the derivative of e to the x was just e to the x. It made our life really easy when we saw e to the x in there. She makes our life really easy when there's an ln in there. Okay. Let's keep the ball rolling. f of x equal to log base 10. So no, no ln in this time, unfortunately. We have to apply the, the differentiation rule where we say um, d over dx of log base b of x, I'm just reminding you what this rule is, is 1 over x ln of b. Okay, so that means that we take, I want to differentiate log base 10 of 2 plus sine x, that means I've got to take 1 over, 1 over x, which in this case, is 2 plus sine x. Times ln of 10. You know, if I, if I really wanted to, that's just a number, right? I could go to my calculator and type in ln of 10. It's going to put me on decimal. You know, e is 2.718, so I'd be probably like 27.18, something like that. I don't know. That might not be right. I don't think that's right. Never mind. I lied. I'm not multiplying by that. Anyway, it's just a number. Leave it at that. Times the derivative of 2 plus sine x. Because right? it's a chain rule. 2 plus sine x. Okay, that means my the derivative is, well, that's a 0. 2 turns into a 0. 
the derivative of sine x is cosine x. So that means it's cosine x over 2 plus sine x ln of 10. And honestly, we could leave that. Because if I try to distribute the ln of 10, that's just a number anyway. I guess I could if I really wanted to say cosine of 2 ln of 10 plus ln of 10 cosine x divided by 2 ln of 10 plus ln of 10 sine x. I really wanted to distribute that in, but it doesn't help me in any way. Yep. Keep the ball rolling. So now, you know, we can see where this is headed. We're just applying more rules within and onto ln of x. Now, I'm going to have to apply the rule for ln with a quotient rule inside of it. Okay, so the quotient rule says, or sorry, excuse me, the chain rule says I, di I differentiate ln, which is 1 over x. Ooh. x in this case is x plus 1 over the square root of x minus 2. Ew. Ew. I mean, we could rewrite that in a minute. It's honestly just a reciprocal of that fraction. But let's just apply the rule first. Times the derivative of the quotient. Okay. Quotient rule says that derivative of the top, uh, derivative of x plus 1 is just 1 times the original bottom minus the derivative of the bottom. Now remember that this is, I could really rewrite this as the square root of x minus 2 is really just uh, x minus 2 to the 1 half, right? Okay, so that means 1 half x minus 2 raised to the negative 1 half times the original top x plus 1. All divided by the square root of x minus 2 squared. So it's just x minus 2. Oof. That's gross. Okay, let's try to manipulate it a little bit. Right? Okay, this 1 over this thing on the left side, let's take the reciprocal, because that's what that means, right? 1 over that value means I just take, okay, x minus 2 over x plus 1. Now I'm going to multiply that by, okay, let's try to work this thing in the numerator here. I've got the square root of x minus 2 minus, now the x plus 1 stays in the numerator. The denominator ends up being 2 square root of x minus 2, all divided by the x minus 2. Oh, and this is going to be cool here. This is going to be real cool. Because watch what we can do. So what's going to happen is, when I multiply in the bottoms, they're going to become x plus 1, x minus 2. The tops are going to be, well, what happens when I multiply square root of x minus 2 times square root of x minus 2? It's just, well, it doesn't really cancel. It cancels out the square root, right? So leaving just an x minus 2. Minus, okay, if I bring one of these to the top, right? That's really what that distribution is. Right? So it ends up being x plus 1 over 2. And you know what? It might just be easier to keep that as a one-half right now. Uh, because isn't that x 
so we got x minus 2 minus, what's wrong? We good? Yeah. Okay. Um, so watch what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to treat this as like a 1 half x plus 1, right? Because isn't that x plus 1 over 2? The reason I want to do that is because I want to be able to, um, uh, I want to be able to combine my terms. And again, this is a minus one half because there's a minus out front of the parenthesis here. I just distributed that in as well. Okay, we're almost there, folks. Uh, X minus one half X is one half X. Negative two minus one half is negative two and a half. Minus two and a half. Let's leave it as fractions though. Um, negative two and a half would be uh, is negative five. Ooh, I screwed up on my key. I forgot to distribute the negative. Oh. Look at me. I had that as a plus sign still. Bad, Mr. Lever. Uh, negative five fourths. Or negative five halves, excuse me, over x plus one, x minus two, right? Negative two and a half, yeah. Well, that was fun. That was that was a lot of fun. I mean, we got ten minutes left. Let's do let's do one more. Let's go crazy, folks. Let's go crazy. Um, no, no, not like the last one. Like a thought for about How much you have left? All right. So, um, now. Absolute, absolute value is weird, right? We talked about, um, in the ending part of chapter two, we talked about how absolute value is not differentiable everywhere, right? It's not differentiable at its corner point, right? It's not differentiable at zero. So there's there might be something weird happening at zero, but let's try to understand what's happening on the left and right side of that, that uh, us, if you will. All right, so uh, notice that I've got an LN applying to it though natural log of the absolute value so that means f prime of x is really going to be one over the absolute value of x times the derivative of the absolute value of x right so that's the chain rule so what is the derivative well it's it's got two different parts to it right isn't the absolute value of x you know, d over dx of the absolute value of x. Isn't the derivative really equal to, well, think about the slope here and here. It's got two different sections to it. What's the slope if x is less than zero? What's the slope? Negative one. Well, what's the slope if x is greater than zero? One. Right? So the derivative is actually two different. It's like a piece line. Right? And notice that I never say or equal to because it's not differentiable at zero. Okay, so that means if I want to take, um, think about this in two pieces now for the whole thing. Okay, f prime of x. Um, what would happen if it's, um, you know, if I apply the multiplication into it? Okay, well, that would mean that it would be negative 1 times 1 over x if x is less than 0. However, if x is less than 0, Right. If x was less than zero, it would be negative one, negative x, right? It would be the opposite of x. So I can go in here and say if x is less than zero, I know I want the opposite of that value, 
right? That's the rule for absolute value. If x is negative 1, I want it to be the opposite of negative 1. I want it to be negative negative 1. It can't still be positive. So what can we do with that? Okay, so what if it's positive? Okay, what if it's positive? Well, that would be 1 over x times 1, which is 1 over x. Right? The absolute value of 1 over x, well, that, if it's positive, it's just 1 over x. Okay, so what can I say about the full derivative? f prime of x is 1 over x with one restriction, as long as x does not equal 0. Because it's, again, not differentiable with 0, which would make sense even more because now it's 1 over x, 1 over 0, which is going to be unconscious. That's cool. I like that one. So, All right. Time it's, 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 